Oh, greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This is possibly the last study on resurrections in the Bible. Today is November 14th, 2024. Um, still on YouTube for as long as I don't know. But uh, with that in mind, let's take a look. And uh, I'm going to try to finish up this Resurrections in the Bible. There may be one more. I don't remember what part this is, but it don't matter. Now, we covered uh, Christ going to hell. Now we're going to, I'm going to do a quick overview and then we're going to cover his resurrection. Because let me tell you something, people. If Christ didn't rise from the dead, we have no Savior. It's as simple as that. And we're going to get more into that in a little bit. But uh, before we do that, let's go to Mark chapter 12 verse 18. Then come unto him, Jesus, the Sadducees. Now the Sadducees are a denomination of Jews. They generally only believed the first five books of the Bible, what they call the Torah or the books of Moses, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy with the emphasis on Leviticus, the Levitical uh, priesthood. God took Levi, one of the 12 tribes, and set him apart to be the tribe that served the Lord in the tabernacle and or temple. They did the animal sacrifices. So they rejected pretty much everything after the first five books of the Moses. They didn't accept the Psalms. They didn't accept Isaiah or Ezekiel or Jeremiah or the minor prophets. They didn't believe any of that. So, then come unto him the Sadducees. See, they didn't believe in a resurrection, so they were sad, you see. Then come unto him, Jesus, the Sadducees, which say, there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed, children, unto his brother. Now, there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. And the second took her and died, Neither left he any seed, and the third likewise. And the seven had her, and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. Well, I tell you what, you want to ask the creator of heaven and earth a question, uh, you're going to get an answer and you're going to look like a fool. Because there was a point when people would quit asking Jesus trick questions because he always threw it right back at them. So, 24. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err? E-R-R. -R, that's where we get the word error. Do ye not therefore err? Because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. And uh, when you start reading about, in let's say, Genesis chapter 6, con uh, compare with Job 38, uh, about the sons of God 
which are angels, marrying the daughters of men, which are women, and how they had giants for children. And then people will pull this verse out of context and say, see, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels. See, angels can't get married and they don't have sex. But they also always leave off those four last words. They neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. See, there are angels in heaven, and there's angels that were cast out of heaven. So there's a big distinction here. So when they tell you, oh, angels can't have children, they can't have sex. Yeah, they will always pull these verses out of context and leave off those words, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Verse 26. And as touching the dead that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses? See, Jesus is throwing this right back at him. How in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. God's not the God of the dead people. He's the God of the living. See, up to this time, they're all in Abraham's bosom. The, the Old Testament saints, that is. And Jesus, after his fleshly body was killed, went to be with them. And he's getting ready. We're getting ready to read about how he brings them back in the resurrection. I guess you could call this three days and the world changed. I did another study, three days that changed the world, but honestly, I don't remember exactly what I did, but you know. Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. Why are they going up to Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem is built on seven hills, just like Rome, just like Istanbul, just like Seattle, Washington, and I heard Moscow. So when they tell you, oh yeah, Mystery Babylon's built on seven hills or seven mountains, it's Rome. Well, Jerusalem is also. Hmm. Yeah, they don't want you to know that. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. Hey, Judas, are you listening? And shall deliver him to the Gentiles, same word as nations, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Oh, three on the third day, he's going to rise again. Now, in Mark chapter 8, Jesus asked them, Who do people say that I am? So let's start in 29, Mark 8, 29. And he, Jesus, saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answereth and saith unto him, Thou art the Christ. Because some people were saying he was John the Baptist. Others said he was Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But Peter said, Thou art the Christ. 
verse 30. And he, Christ, charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Now remember, Jesus is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. The Bible plainly teaches that Christ created all things. He is God in the flesh. Read 1 Timothy 3.16. The only thing that Jesus did when his body was crucified, the only part of him that died was his flesh body. His soul and his spirit did not die. And I've had people say, well, why did Jesus pray to himself if he's God? Well, Jesus in the flesh was praying to God the Father as an example for us. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. But he is subservient to the Father. He is a man under authority, just like the Roman centurion was. All right, so. In Matthew 17, verse 7. And Jesus came and touched them, the disciples, and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Maybe we should go back and read the whole thing here. Matthew 17. Yeah, Matthew 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. So basically, by themselves. Because they're going to see something extra special here. Verse 2, And was transfigured before them. Who is transfigured? Christ. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. So here it is. They're getting a preview of what Christ is going to look like after he's resurrected. Verse 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, Elijah, Greek rendering, Elias, talking with him. Now, Moses died, and Moses is the one who came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, the law. Moses represents the law and death. Elias, or Elijah, he was taken up into a whirlwind, into heaven. He never died. He will return one day. To confront the false prophet and the beast. Believe it or not, he will. And he never died. And Elijah represents the prophets. So you have Moses the law and Elijah the prophets. Because he was indeed a prophet. Remember they asked Jesus about the two commandments? Oh, you don't? Oh, all right. Well, I'll be happy to uh, get that to you here. In Matthew chapter 22, and verse 36, a lawyer of the law, not a lawyer like we got today, but a lawyer of Bible law, he said to Jesus, he says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? 
Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Love the Lord. That's the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, if you got a bunch of Satanists as neighbors, uh, well, God had a plan for that, but we don't follow that anymore. So, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets. So there you go. The law and the prophets. So, Jesus is transfigured. He's glowing like the sun. And Moses and Elijah are there talking with him. Verse 4. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Uh, tabernacles, you know, basically a temporary type shelter. You know, you could make it out of tree branches so that, you know, you get people out of the sun or the rain or whatever, you know, because it gets hot in the desert, right? So he wants to make three tabernacles. Verse 5. While he, Peter, yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen up, people. This is my beloved son. Verse 6. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. So no more Moses, no more Eliab. Elias, Elijah. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. So don't tell anybody about what you saw today until after I am brought back to life from the dead in a resurrected body basically so and his disciples asked him saying why then say the scribes that Elias must come first because Elijah has to come before the coming of the Lord so here it is Elijah did come but John the Baptist is came in the spirit and power of Elijah Elijah I've had people say, "Ah, oh, well, John the Baptist was Elijah. No, he wasn't, because Elijah never died. And John the Baptist was born. And if you think John the Baptist and Elijah are the same person, then you got to believe in reincarnation, which is a lie. No. John is John, and Elijah is Elijah. But John came in the spirit and power of Elijah. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come first and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed, Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake of them of John the Baptist. 
All right, let's read Luke chapter 1. We'll start in verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Uh, Aaron and Moses were brothers of the tribe of Levi, the priest tribe. Verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. All right. Uh, verse 8. And it came to pass that while he, Zacharias, executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot, his job, was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. All right, verse 10. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him, Zacharias, an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of the incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. You know, I think if I was doing my job and there was an angel, I think I'd be kind of, yeah. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Um, you know, I'm so sick of hearing people saying, Oh, there's no J in the Hebrew, so his name couldn't have been John. Well, the New Testament wasn't written in Hebrew, it was written in Greek. So, and thou shalt call his name John. And there was an angel that named, told Mary to name her son Jesus. But there's no J in the Hebrew, so it couldn't have possibly been his name. Yeah, well, you've been listening to the rabbis too much. Maybe you ought to read the Bible instead of listening to rabbis. Besides, rabbis don't know Hebrew either. They know Yiddish. Verse 14. And thou shalt have great joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Many, not all. Verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Wow. Born with the Holy Spirit. From the begin very beginning. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Many, not all. Here's the punchline. Verse 17. Listen carefully. Now, this is the angel speaking. And he, John, uh, the angel's talking to Zacharias, saying, And he... John, John the Baptist, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, Greek rendering of Elijah. So John is going to go in the power and spirit of Elias, Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And what did John the Baptist do? He was the messenger that prepared the way for Jesus. So, now if you're interested, I have an entire video on the trial of Jesus and his crucifixion. And, you know, you write me, I'll give you the link, no problem. Um, it's on YouTube. I don't know how long I'll be on YouTube, but I'm on YouTube for now anyways. All right, so Jesus has been crucified. 
and they've laid him in the tomb. And we are, let's see, Matthew 27. We're going to start in 61. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher, the grave. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Now remember, you had the Sadducees that just accepted the first five books of Moses. Well, the Pharisees accepted the entire books of Moses plus the Psalms and the major prophets and the minor prophets, you know, Elijah, I mean, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Obadiah, Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah, Ezra, you know, all those books, Daniel, Jonah, all those books. But they also believed in the tradition of the elders, which is the Commentary of the Bible by their so-called learned rabbis. So, not only did they follow God's law, they also followed man-made's laws. And Jesus never had too many good things to say about them. So, all right. So, in verse 62, we read, now this next day, that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Pilate is the Roman governor of the area, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver, speaking of Christ, that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher, the grave, be made sure until the third day. In other words, set a, set a guard, set watch. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people that, uh, and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Now, why in the world would people want to steal the body away, say he's risen from the dead, so they can be persecuted? I mean, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. All right, verse 65. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, you know, you have guards, you have guards, you know, don't do the watch, the watch, the tomb. Ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. And when they're talking about a watch, they're not talking about a Timex or a Rolex. No, they're talking about guards. Guards to watch the, the grave and to make sure that nobody tampers with the grave. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Guard. All right, let's get to the good part. Matthew chapter 28. We're going to read probably the whole chapter. Verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So, uh, first day of the week, uh, Sunday morning. Verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the, Lord, uh, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning. Wow. Just like the transfiguration. I guess his, his face glowed. And his raiment, or clothing, white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. What keepers? The, keep, the guards. 
that we're keeping the uh, the grave secure. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Only a new body. He's got a resurrected body. His soul and his spirit were not dead. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. So Jesus is appearing unto them. Now, there are actually, believe it or not, people will tell you that after being beaten and crucified and having a spear pierced in his side, that Jesus really wasn't dead. No, he just, you know, he, he was hurt, but, you know, and then he woke up from his sleep, and now he's all better, and everybody's saying he rose from the dead. Uh, of course, that comes from the uh, those that attend the synagogue. But I tell you what, if you're beaten and crucified, and have a spear stuck into your side, I don't think you're going to uh, wake up from a sleep and three days later and then be everything be all right. I don't think so. You know, when the soldier stuck the spear into his side, the Bible records out came blood and water. The only reason blood and uh, the water doesn't separate from the blood is because the heart is constantly pumping and mixing it. But when the heart stops pumping, the blood and the water separate. Because there's nothing to mix it with. That is a sign of death. Ask any medical professional that knows about this stuff. So, they call that the swoon theory. Yeah, Jesus got beat up really bad and had a sword i mean a spear shoved uh shoved up his rib cage but really he didn't die he was just you know sleeping for a couple days and now he's all better that's what the enemy wants you to believe but be not afraid go tell my brethren that they go into galilee and there shall they see me now when they were going behold some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they're talking about the watch, they're talking about the soldiers. Verse 12. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Uh, so yeah, you guys were sleeping, say the disciples came when we were sleeping, and they stole the body of Jesus away. Now wait a minute, if you were sleeping, how do you know the disciples came and stole the body away? Were you sleeping with one eye open and thought it was a dream? No. No. 
But not only that, uh, do you know what the penalty for sleeping on guard duty is? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I don't know about other countries, but in the United States, if you were in a wartime situation, in a combat role, and you were asleep on guard duty, you could be court-martialed and put to death. Believe me, sleeping on guard duty was a very serious offense. And Rome was probably even more severe. <laughs> I don't know how it could be more severe to kill you, but maybe the method, I don't know. All I know is sleeping on guard duty could lead to death. So that's why they gave them large money, a lot of money. Hey, we want you to say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Why would they have to persuade him and secure them? Because if the governor heard them admit that they were sleeping on guard duty, he could put them to death. Hmm. But people love money, so. Verse 15. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Yeah, to this day, the Jews say, oh yeah, the disciples came and stole his body away at night. He's really not alive. Verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Eleven disciples. Judas hung himself. Who's the twelfth? Well, some people will say Matthias, but he didn't write any books, did he? I think it's Paul. But you got those that deny Paul, so honestly, I, I honestly wonder if they're even believers. Because if you don't believe who Jesus sent, how can you believe Jesus? Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, and when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Man, that would be something to see, huh? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore... Teach all nations, same word as Gentiles, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. All right, let's go to John chapter 20. I should have read this first before I read the other chapter, but such is life. Verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, while it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple Sifle, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they both ran together, and the other sepulchre, I'm sorry, the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. 
Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. I guess they didn't remember what he had said. I, uh, that's how I'm seeing that. Then the disciples went away again unto their own house. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had said, uh, when she had th uh, thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Who seekest thou? She, supposing him to, uh, him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. I'm beginning, I think Rabboni is the Greek rendering of rabbi. And rabbi means master. Verse 17, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not. Touch me not. Don't touch me. Not yet. Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend, which means to go up, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the you know who's, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands in his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, when you look at the word breathe, and spirit, and wind, it's the Greek word pneuma, like pneumatic ear tools, like in a tire shop. That's where they get the word. So, remember, uh, the Lord breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. What is that, in Genesis chapter 2, I think? So, Jesus breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. 23. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. So, if you... Whoever sins you forgive, they're forgiven, remitted. Oh, let's take a look at that. Remit, uh, verb, transitive, Latin. It means to forgive, to pardon as a fault or crime. To forgive, to surrender the right of punishing a crime as to remit punishment. So, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Uh, it means they're going to keep their sins. But if they're remitted, it means their sins are taken away. 
Verse 24. But Thomas, doubting Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were with in, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the, in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Do you believe that Jesus died and rose from the grave? Well, you're blessed if you do. Verse 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name, eternal life. And what is that name? That name is Jesus. It's not Yeshua HaMashiach. My New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. Yeshua is going to be the Messiah of the rabbis who's coming one day. And remember... Uh, the Antichrist comes before Jesus does. Unless you're a pre-tribber, then you think it's the other way around. But, nope, you're wrong. The man of sin comes first. You want proof of that? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You see, this is why they try to tell you Paul is not for real. Because Paul blows away all the pre-trib rapture lies. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. So, they're talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus and our gathering to him. Verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And there's idiots that will tell you that the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is two different events. But what they're really doing is telling you that they don't believe Jesus Christ is Lord. The day of Christ and the day of the Lord is the same thing. The day of the Lord is the Old Testament, and the day of Christ is the same event in the New Testament. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. A falling away of what? The faith except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin, the beast, the Antichrist, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God." The day of Christ will not happen until the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, the beast, the antichrist, whatever name he goes by. Has to happen first. Period. 
In the book of Acts, chapter 26, 23, we read that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Now in John 2, chapter 22, when therefore he, Christ, when he, therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now there's those that'll tell you that, oh, well, in Ecclesiastes 9, 5, we read, for the living know not, uh, I'm sorry, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. And they'll say, see, the, the, the dead, they don't know anything. But is that pointing out um, the point of view of the dead knowing what's going on on the earth? That's kind of how I look at it. I mean, in Abraham's bosom with the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man was having a conversation with Abraham. So, I don't know. Uh, in Isaiah 26, 19, Thy dead men shall live. Why? The resurrection. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Oh yeah, there's going to come a day. But there's only really two more resurrections that I know of. The resurrection of the just, and then a thousand years later will be the second resurrection, which is the resurrection of the unjust, and you don't want to be a part of that one. So, in Matthew 8.22, there was a man who was went to Jesus and wanted to follow him, but he says, Lord, let me uh, bury my father first. But in Matthew 8, 22, but Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Now, how can the dead bury the dead? Well, he's saying, let the spiritually dead bury those that are physically dead dead so in Matthew 11 5 Jesus said the blind receive their sight oh uh, this was John the Baptist's people if I remember correctly John the Baptist's people were asking Jesus are you the one or do we look for another and Jesus said the blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. Jesus raised several people from the dead. The dead are raised up, like Lazarus. And the poor have the gospel, the good news, preached to them. In John chapter 5, verse 23, Jesus speaking, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Huh. So if the Father sent the Son, and the Son sent Paul, maybe you ought to listen to Paul. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life, spiritual death unto spiritual eternal life, right? Verse 25. 
Verily, verily, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, for as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. In John 11, 25, Jesus, when talking to Mary about her brother Lazarus, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. In John 21, 14, This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. See, Jesus had showed himself three times unto his disciples. In Acts 3.15, Peter, I think it is, was blasting him, saying, And killed the Prince of Life, Christ, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are our witnesses. Now, you know, the disciples suffered greatly for their faith in Christ. It, you, you think uh, if you stole the body of Jesus and was proclaiming that he rose from the dead, and you know he didn't, you know it's a lie, and they're going to put you to death for lying, are you going to die for a lie? Does that make sense to you? I mean, it doesn't to me. I mean, if I stole something and somebody catches me and, and says, I'm going to put you to death unless you admit that you stole this. I mean, what good is you're going to be put to death. You're going to die. So there's no point in lying. So... There's just no point in it. Acts 4.2, being grieved, the chief priests, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Hmm. All right, so... Let's take a look at something here. All right, let's read Acts chapter 23. Paul was met on the way to Damascus by the Lord. As we studied in a previous study. And here it is. He's proclaiming Christ to the Jews. Acts chapter 23. You know, and people that deny that Paul is an apostle, they're telling you that the book of Acts is wrong. Oh yeah, this book of Acts, the church has believed in the book of Acts for almost 2,000 years. But they're all wrong. But the Paul haters, they're right. You know, oh, the book of Acts is wrong. Heretics. My Bible says a heretic after the second and third admonition, reject. And that's what I do. Two, three times, I'll try to send you the, in the right way. But after that, I'm not going to waste my time. They don't want to believe Paul. Maybe they don't want to believe Jesus who sent Paul. Go join a synagogue. Acts chapter 23, verse 1. Now, Paul has been captured, and he's being kind of uh, questioned about his faith. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. 
And the high priest, Ananias, commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. Right, the hope and resurrection of the dead, Christ. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension, arguments, between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. So not only do the Sadducees say there's no resurrection, they don't believe in angels either. But the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain of the Roman soldiers, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night following, the Lord... Jesus, the Lord stood by him, Paul, and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Wow. So Paul is being told by Jesus, well, you testified me of Jerusalem, so now you're going to testify of me in Rome. Wow. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15. Corinth was a Greek city in Greece, of Greeks. And Paul haters will tell you that this does not belong in the Bible. Because the Paul's a false apostle. Fools. Verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. In other words, they're dead. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle in other words he's saying i'm not i'm not worthy to be called an apostle 
that I that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I, del but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Wherefore, whether it were I or they, so we preached, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? See, that's the error of the Sadducees. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. Vain means worthless. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept or dead. For since by man came death, Adam, by man, Christ, came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end. They that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he, Christ, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Did you know Christ has an enemies? Christ has enemies? Well, if Christ has enemies, that means I have enemies too. Verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Did you know enemy is cry uh, the enemy of Christ is death? Well, Christ is life. What's the opposite of life? Death. Verse 27. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. See, God the Father put all things under Christ. Verse 29. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Uh, I don't know exactly what this means, but uh, evidently there was a group of people that were baptizing for the dead. The only group that I know that baptized people for the dead is the, Mor the morons, I mean the Mormons. Because, um, yeah, and their Jesus is the brother of Satan. 
Well, my Bible says that Jesus created all things, including Satan. So, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm not. But uh, Jesus is not a brother of Satan. However, when the Mormons say that their Jesus is the brother of Satan, I believe them. I really do. But their Jesus and my Jesus is not the same Jesus. Like they say, the Book of Mormon, another gospel. Yeah. Which is not a gospel. Verse 30. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, uh, two-legged beasts, I'm sure, what advantage if it me if the dead rise not? You know, if there's no resurrection, what good is it? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. You ever heard the expression, eat, drink, and be merry? For tomorrow we die. Verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, thou which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat or some other grain. See, when you plant a seed, the seed is destroyed. But you get a plant that grows in its place. So the seed dies, but a new body, the plant, grows, right? Verse 38. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, celestial as in, in the stars, and bodies terrestrial, which is the earth. Terrestrial is where you get the word terrain, like the terrain of a map, of the earth. So there's heavenly bodies and there's earthly bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man, Adam, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man, Christ, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that is heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood 
flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, dead, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that verse right there alone destroys the pre-trib rapture. There are seven trumps in the book of Revelation. The seventh one is at the end of the tribulation. And they'll tell you, oh, well, this is the pre-trib rapture verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, not Donald. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death, the sting of, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, victory through G our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, forasmuch as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And people will tell you that Paul is a false apostle that teaches all this stuff. Wow. Paul writes in Romans 10.9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Wow. Do you believe the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead? I do. Hebrews 11.35 Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured. What were they tortured for? Their faith in Christ. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Wow. All right, let's read Acts chapter 1, and we're getting ready to close out here. We're not going to read the whole chapter, just verse 1. Um... Luke is generally credited with writing the book of Acts. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom after he showed himself alive, after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See, the disciples knew that there's going to come a day when the Lord's going to return, the, restore the kingdom to Israel. Well, I didn't see the Lord return in 1948 to take a bunch of unbelieving 
people, heretics, uh, over in the Middle East to create a kingdom called Israel. I, you know, the Lord's going to gather his people. So that hasn't happened yet. Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? But he, Christ, said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. See, only the Father knows what day Christ will return. Verse 8, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he, Christ, he was taken up. Christ was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Huh. Let's read that again. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, angels, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So you see Christ going up into the clouds, into the sky. He's going to come back in the same manner. In the clouds. With a cloud of witnesses, people. All right, let's finish up. So Christ is going to come with the clouds. But that's another story. Did you know in Matthew 27, in verse 33, that after Christ, after Christ's resurrection, that uh, people who were dead came out of the graves and went into Jerusalem? Did you know that? Not too many do. In Matthew 27, and you can read the entire chapter of 27, Matthew 27, if you want. I'm just going to read verse 53. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Here are people that were dead, probably in Abraham's bosom, probably heard every word that Christ said to them when he was three days, three nights in the heart of the earth, telling everybody that he was the Messiah and to believe in him. And he took captivity captive. And they, after Christ rose from the dead, some of these people came out of their graves, went into Jerusalem, and appeared unto many. What kind of stories were these people telling? We met Jesus in the grave. But, but, but you were dead. Yes, I know, I was dead. But I'm alive now. Thank you, Jesus. Can you imagine that? What stories that you could have probably wrote a book about this. In Ephesians 4 and 8, Wherefore he saith, When he ascendeth up on high, he led captivity captive. What captivity? When we were in hell, when those of us that died before Christ were in hell, we were captives. But Jesus led captivity captive. He sprung open the gates of hell. He led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. What gift? Grace and eternal life. Wow. And that is a direct quote of Psalm 68, 18. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also, 
that the Lord God might dwell among them. That the Lord God might dwell among them. Wow, that's heavy. In Luke 20, 36, uh, speaking of the resurrection, Jesus said, Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels, and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Wow. Revelation 1.18 and we're going to, well, let's see, maybe I, one more. Revelation 118, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell. That's right. Jesus has the key of hell, the keys of hell. He opened up the gates of hell, the prison, and have the keys of hell and of death. And let's close out with Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. We just read 118. Now let's read 1 and, 1 and verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Boy, I'll tell you what. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Wow. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.